Hi again everybody. Today we are going to look at sizing some conduit. Uh, this comes from section 12, wiring methods, rule 12, 9, 10, sub rule 4. Uh, we're going to size some conduit based on having different types of wire inside of the conduit, right? So that's going to take me through these tables. Table 8 gives me a percentage fill. Tables 9A through J shows me some different conduit types, as well as tables 10A through C gives me a wire type. So I have stranded conductors and I have solid conductors that we're generally using for the examples that we've had so far, right? So in this question, I have some uh, stranded and I have some solid. Uh, let's go through and take a look at what we can uh, do to actually install these in some conduit. The conduit we have is flexible metal conduit. So as we're going through this, not only do we have stranded, we need to know what the insulation type is on our wire as well. It's not stated in the question, so we know that we default to RW90XLPE. So as we're looking through the tables, that's the column we're going to look for. Okay, so to figure out how much area these all take up, we'll start off with the number 10 stranded. So that's going to take us over to table 10A. And for a number 10 stranded conductor, I'm going to have an area of 15.67 millimeters squared. Right, we have six of them. So when we multiply that all out, we end up with 94.02 millimeters squared. Okay, the second one that we're going to do is number 8 stranded. So again, we're still going back over to table 10A. And now we'll look at number 8. Number 8, a single conductor, is 28.17 millimeters squared. And we have 9 of them, so we'll just multiply that by 9. For a grand total, 253.53 millimeters squared. The last one we have is a number 14, but this time it's solid, so we're not going to be in 10A. We're going to have to go over to table 10C. So table 10C gives me all of my solid conductors. For number 14, single one of those is 7.78 millimeters squared. And this time we have 12 of those. So we multiply that through, we will get 93.36 millimeters squared. So now all we have to do is total that up, get that all together as a grand total, that comes out to 440.91 millimeters squared. Right now what do we do with that number? Now we need to know um, the percentage fill that we can actually fill a conduit up to. That's where we go back over to table 8. When I have more than four conductors, I'm going to be into a 40% fill. Right, so take this down, table 8, table 8 tells me 40%. The only, re only reason we need that now is because when we go through tables 9A to J, we have all our columns that give me a percentage fill that I'm allowed. So once I find the conduit that I'm looking for from tables 9A through J, I'm going to be looking in the 40% column. For us, we're going to put this in flexible metal conduit. So that's going to take us to table 9B. And in the 40% column, we're looking for a number as big or bigger, the next size up from this 40% 440.91 millimeters squared. That's going to take me to a 41 trade size conduit, which is good for 456 millimeters squared. So there you go. Hopefully that's helpful, and we will see you on the next one.